everyone, Edna Kimball, Edna Sells, Century 21 Wright Real Estate, and welcome to today's episode of our podcast, which is going, we're going to talk about home repairs not to request. That's correct. So one common question that buyers ask their realtor is when purchasing a home is what reasonable request for repairs can I ask for? There's not really like a standard or a set basis for what's reasonable and what isn't. However, there are some things that really just should not be requested because it will complicate the process. Um, and what the way I like for you to think about it is aesthetics over actual um, working parts or moving parts. If the real estate agent you have hired just submits your request to the seller, um, without giving you any advice, then you may have a problem. This is something that you want to have a discussion about. Um, you don't want to necessarily hire a yes person to represent you. You want someone who is knowledgeable and qualified so that while you're negotiating those repairs, it's a true negotiation and you are familiar if your requests are reasonable or non-reasonable. So how to negotiate these repairs, some things that you want to uh, consider um, to decide if it's a reasonable request or not. Now, in my take, cosmetic issues. Cosmetic issues are problems such as the deck needs staining, touch-up paint, repairing, crack, repairing a crack that doesn't have anything to do with the structure um, in your in your sheetrock. Cosmetic issues are at the top of most buyers list, but guys, at the end of the day, you should not ask the seller to fix them. Why? Because of their aesthetic and you should or probably did see them when you were walking through the home originally and before prior to making the offer. So many of these also are really relatively easy uh, to correct without spending too much money. And ultimately, if it's aesthetic, you want to have some kind of an input on how it's being handled because it's the aesthetic part you don't like. And if the seller fixes it or repairs it, and then you're still not happy with it, then it was really a big time waste um, of their money and of everyone's time. So even if the repairs are somewhat expensive, then that's a completely uh, different issue and you need to be somewhat flexible. So what I'm talking about is anything that's under $100. Minor issues under that $100, um, you may want to leave off the repair request. It's something that you as a buyer can most likely go ahead and have take care of or have your best friend's husband come and take care of, that type of situation. These problems um, are typically um, a loose doorknob or a drip around a faucet and can be considered to be nitpicky and all the way to extreme when a seller is negotiating with you. Now, if there's a hundred little things that need to be fixed, both you and the seller um, may want to renegotiate maybe a price and what that looks like instead of submitting a list for the seller to do 50 to 100 little nitpicky items, maybe you go back and you actually ask the seller to renegotiate the price and to reduce the price of the home by $1,000 so that you can then go to Lowe's, go to Tahlequah Lumber, or hire a handyman to come in and take care of those things. So if you're purchasing a home in this unusual market, the shifty market, be especially careful that a homeowner may get upset with you and cancel the contract and refuse to make any of the repairs. Now, because we are in a shifting market, sellers are becoming more likely to work with a buyer on some of these repairs. But guys, we still do have a little bit of a housing crunch. And if you genuinely want the home, don't let the deal fall apart over some little nitpicky $100 items. Now, one thing that comes up consistently in our market, window seals. Failed window seals are quite common in all homes. This is where the glass has become fogged between, so there's not a true visual on the exterior. This falls into kind of a gray category, if you will. Most home inspectors will tell you that a failed window seal is purely cosmetic. There's very little energy that's actually lost through the failed window seal and the insulation value is still extremely minimal that you're losing. So while keeping this in mind, you may want to make your offer based upon 
that window being repaired or replaced. Again, it's something that most likely you saw when you were previewing the home prior to making your offer on the home. Also, some sellers will disclose an item on their property condition disclosure, and their thought process is, I disclosed it prior to you making the offer, so now I don't want to fix it. So it's really important that you read the property condition disclosure. Now, another item that comes up, and this one gets all the realtors, renovations that you want to make. So for example, you may want to go in and open a wall and make a bedroom larger. You may want to add a closet to a room or switch out the paint, light fixtures, or even the flooring. The thing about asking a seller to do any of these renovations for you, it's just a major sales risk. For one, we do have a shortage of qualified uh, contractors in our market. We have, they are all very, very busy, and this is gonna cause a major delay. Also, it's super frustrating for both parties because sometimes there is no deadline or end timeline for getting those items done because no one, neither the buyer nor the seller, can control them. So don't ask your seller to renovate the home to make it right for you. Just know that if it's the home for you, some of these things you may have to do after, and you need to consider that in your budget when you're making the offer. Now, let's talk about concrete cracks. Did you know that concrete cracks are typically purely aesthetic? Very rarely are they truly issues with the structure. What you want to do is do your research. If they are um, different levels or there is a very wide gap, then yes, those are concerns. But something that you need to know about concrete, it does two things. It gets hard and it cracks. So a concrete crack is not necessarily something that you need to worry about. So having the home inspector educate you on what is considered like a spider crack is really, really important. Obviously allowing any kind of water intrusion into those cracks can become an issue. So there are um, companies that will inject an epoxy for a fairly reasonable price and or you may be able to work with one of your local vendors to have that taken care of. Now, loose fixtures, railings, and similar issues. A loose doorknob, a light fixture, or a railing on a deck or stairwell may be an annoying issue for you um, or potentially even unsafe. You have to determine if that's something that can easily be taken care of and if you are knowledgeable and qualified to do that. You also need to be aware that the appraiser may require it because it, if it's a safety issue, then most likely they will. Now, obviously, there's vast if there's vast areas of rot or decay causing any of these loose or safety issues, then absolutely wood rot is something that should be taken care of. However, again, it's not a major issue for you to completely stress out about, but you should get your bid and know what you're dealing with. Water or minor water issues. When water saturates the entire, when water saturation is present, you need to determine how serious the issue is. Most two-story homes at some time or another has had water damage from the upstairs bathroom. You need to get the history of that water damage and know what you're dealing with. If you're purchasing a home in Cherokee County, Oklahoma that has a basement, you do need to be aware that most likely you will need to run a, what are they called? You will need to run a dehumidifier. It's very, very common in our market for there to be some water intrusion in basements simply because our water table is so high. So I know that we've covered a lot of issues here, but you just want to um, approach the process in a non-emotional way, and I know that's easier said than done, and have a a long lengthy conversation with your realtor on what items you can take care of after closing and what items truly are a concern for you. 
So I hope that you found this to be helpful. These are items that you may want to avoid asking the seller to fix because possibly they're not anything that really genuinely will affect the value of the home and you can typically take care of them for a few hundred bucks after closing. As always, shop local, give Tahlequah Lumber a call. Leon over there is phenomenal to work with and if he can't help you, he can definitely point you in the right direction. As always, this is How You Real Estate. If you have any questions, tips, or tricks that you want to share with us, please don't hesitate. We'd love to hear them. Thanks so much.